We are addicted to story. So far in 2022, the top five movies in Hollywood, Top Gun Maverick, Doctor Strange, Jurassic World, The Batman, and Minions has brought in $2.2 billion US, which is like a trillion Canadian dollars right now, <laughs> domestically, just in America. So those top movies have brought in that much money, not going to Asia, not coming to Canada, Europe. Hollywood makes about 350 movies a year. Bollywood makes twice that. You may have heard of a little play called Hamilton. It's an American musical that opened on Broadway in 2015 and it makes about $2 million a week. It just recently broke a billion dollars on Broadway. Its creator, Lin-Manuel Miranda, sold the film version of the play to Disney Plus for 75 million. It debuted on July 3rd. Between that Friday and this, the Sunday, the Disney App Plus was downloaded 752,000 times. It's estimated that that production's been streamed about two million times. Lin-Manuel's net worth is estimated to be at 90 million. Not bad for a theater guy. The Canadian rapper Drake's album Scorpion has been streamed one billion times. 132 million streams on the first day iTunes has 30 million uh, songs available, 800 million active users. What is a song? A small story. The average price for a 30 second ad in the Super Bowl this year is $6.5 million. What is an ad? A small story. Netflix currently has 222 million subscribers. 26 million were added in the first two months of, the, of COVID. And those subscribers, us, Watch six billion hours of content a month. It takes, just Netflix, takes up almost 20% of the entire internet's uh, downstream. Almost 20%. Amazon Prime has 150 million members. Calgary spent $245 million on a central library. Yeah, books. It's estimated that the average person sees between 6,000 and 10,000 ads every day. What is an ad? Thank you. <laughs> Movie makers, musicians, novelists, video game designers, playwrights, advertisers, Netflix showrunners, artists, get how important story is to us. They know that no matter how bad a recession is, what the price of oil is, or whether we're not in a world pandemic, we will still consume art and story. I appreciate that I might be a bit biased, but I actually believe that there is nothing and nobody in North America right now that is shaping the hearts and minds more than artists. Not preachers or teachers or politicians, not even parents. No offense to any of those, but artists are telling us what to buy, where to eat, what car to drive, and how to smell. We are defining what people think about sex and beauty and money and family and spirituality. I believe that a 22-minute sitcom has more impact than any sermon or political speech or thesis paper. I am an artist, and even I don't think that's always a great idea. I say this for a couple of reasons. Artists have not been known for their healthy lifestyle choices. In fact, there is a proven link between mental illness and creativity particularly mood disorders like depression and manic episodes. The list is long of the great artists that have struggled in the past. Sylvia Plath, Van Gogh, Edward Munch, Charles Dickens, Virginia Woolf, Tchaikovsky, and Frida Kahlo. Our more current artists, their mental health seems to manifest in addictions and bad behavior. But we're the ones telling people how to live. I understand the challenges of being an artist. We're under tight deadlines, high expectations, and fierce criticism. I have spent most of my adult life trying to squeeze money out of government granting agencies and foundations and individuals. Hey, hey, what we do matters. We're changing the world. No, actually, seriously, would you support that? It's exhausting. And the average artist in Alberta, unless you're doing more commercial work, makes about $25,800. The poverty line is 23,298. The kind of art I do as a theater creator affords me actually way too much time in front of the audience. My art actually demands that I have an audience. So I get too much recognition and too much applause. 
This is bad for my ego, actually. <laughs> and gives me a false understanding of my own importance. I am continually navigating the reality of what we do that actually does matter, and at the same time reminding myself that we're not saving babies from cancer. These and other influences are why I'm nervous about the amount of power and influence that we have. I can't actually change how much or even how North America is consuming art, but I can check myself regularly at what kind of art I'm actually putting out into the world, what kind of stories I'm telling. You see, I'm not interested in hopeless stories. Stories that teach us that life doesn't mean anything, that humanity has no great purpose, stories that advocate for, if it feels good, do it. It's all about my personal truth and my happiness. The ends justify the means. Not interested. You see, I'm not advocating for inauthentic happy ending stories where it all wraps up nicely in the end. Small town girl gets big city boy. They take over the local bookstore. They adopt a puppy. This is, there is a whole channel dedicated to that. The Hallmark Channel. I also think these stories are damaging. There is, a, there is still evil in the world. Families dissolve, planes crash, countries go to war. So what is the role of the storyteller in this world? To tell the truth, to acknowledge the darkness, and to allow it to change their protagonist for good. The word I was given for this month was ethos. Ethos is a Greek word meaning character that is used to describe guiding beliefs or ideals. As a playwright and an actor, I've spent a great deal of time developing characters, but more and more I am interested in my own character and the story I am telling with my life. A general rule about great stories is that characters actually don't want to change. You have to force them. They have to be confronted with a challenge, a diagnosis, a tragedy, a failure, and this actually propels them into the story. It changes them. Like, who, who actually saw Star Wars in the theater, like the first one? Or who's old enough to, thank you, Star Wars guy back there, with your, I told him to wear the shirt. <laughs> Luke Skywalker, the protagonist, where is he when we first meet him? What happened to him? Why is he on this little like, island? Uh, uh, planet, it's early. His parents were killed, he's on this little planet and he's tending alien sheep. And then what happens, a little, little droid comes out and what comes out of him? A little movie, pretty girl saying, save me, save me. He has a choice in that to say, control, alt, delete, put that away, carry on with my life. I've made peace with my parents dying. No, 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 that propels him into this story where there's trash combactors and stormtroopers and lots of horrible tragedy, he finds out the pretty girl's a sister. I hope I didn't ruin that for anyone. <laughs> it's 35 years ago. But how, who is he at the end? He's different because of all the bad things. He's brave, he's a Jedi. Hobbits, find a ring. Well, you know what they could have done? Just put it in your pocket, carry on. We don't get nine hours of this epic movie with orcs and talking trees and terrible things. And so these little furry guys at the end are actually brave. They weren't brave at the beginning. Scrooge, what happens to Scrooge? <laughs> He's a horrible, greedy man. He doesn't change because he won the lottery, that he got more money. He actually changes because of a horrible dream, a horrible experience. What happens? He's a good guy at the end. He gives his money away. These characters are changed because of the terrible thing not in spite of it. So yes, tell stories about the darkness, but don't let your characters live there. Let it be the catalyst for them to do better. Let them be people of hope to encourage the audiences to also be those people. These are the characters that we actually stand up and applaud for. I wanna be the kind of protagonist that people root for, kind and brave, and seeing every problem or tragedy as an inciting incident that propels me into a new storyline instead of a reason to complain and turn bitter and rage against how unfair the world is. If I am not living a good story, it's actually hard to tell good stories on stage or in your business. So what is the story you're telling with your life? 
Is it an epic adventure, a drama, comedy? Are you courageous, risking everything for love, laying down your life for your friends? Are you fighting for good to win over evil? Have you figured out what your passion and your calling is? I saw some of those words on the manifesto. So let me rabbit trail for a minute. I think the word passion is really overused, actually, and misunderstood. People say they're passionate about everything now, tacos and skiing and keto and the stampeders. I'm not sure if that's the right word to use. The Latin word for passion is pati, which actually means to suffer. Passion isn't the same as enjoyment or pleasure. It's believing so deeply in something that you are willing to suffer, to manifest that vision for the future. You're willing to forego momentary enjoyment for the fruit of commitment and sustained effort. Have you found your passion? Are you living it out? And what about your calling, often connected to your passion? I would venture to say, I'm making this up, but 80% of the people on the planet never ever figure out what their calling is and then live it out. You see, they get a glimpse of it, they actually see it, and it's in those moments that you're fully alive, but it's too big, it's too scary, it's too risky. So they settle for a life of doing things they're pretty good at and are pretty much guaranteed success at. I sometimes call them shadow callings. Hi, buddy. So your calling is to be an actor, and believe you me, I've heard every reason why you can't possibly do that. You're too short and too fat and too tall and too old and too young and too rich and too, I've heard them all. So you don't become an actor, here's what you do. You become a theater critic, God bless them. <laughs> they're just sort of on the side. They're not really, but they're gonna criticize, right? That's so much safer to sit on the sidelines. Figuring out your calling is tricky, but here's a clue for if some, that something is actually not your calling. If it's too easy, too safe, and if it's all about you. Again, I get students auditioning to try to get into theater and I ask them why they're interested in being an actor. If they say anything about being famous, this is not their calling. First of all, being famous is not a job. No one is posting be famous jobs. Being recognizable or famous for being an actor is actually an unfortunate byproduct of just doing the job. It mostly gets in the way of your work. And if all you want to do is make money, gain power, or recognition, this is not your calling. Your calling must give back in some way, must make our world a little better. That doesn't mean you need to start an orphanage, but there must be something bigger than you that your calling aspires you to be. At Fire Exit, part of our mission or calling is to be a safe place for artists who have been burned in the industry. They've been shamed or demeaned or yelled at. There is no yelling in my company. No yelling, unless something's falling from the sky. Again, not curing baby cancer people. We pay our bills on time. We treat everyone from the actor to the usher with respect. We invest and train the next generation. We believe in radical hospitality. We make art accessible to everyone and we tell stories that matter. That is the story we are telling with our company. As creators, we are the culture makers and storytellers of this generation. We have a responsibility to be healthy and to create art that is authentic and innovative and beautiful. Art was never meant to be on the fringes of our society, you know, like dessert, not the main course, nice but not necessary. Art should not be a rare indulgence that we do every once in a while. It should be something we seek out daily. Art is meant to be created and experienced in community and reflected on together, not on Zoom, just saying. Art should be a catalyst to relationship and not just entertainment to be consumed and forgotten. More and more, I think it is the job of the artist to provoke us to actually do something. It is easy to be overwhelmed by the problems in our world right now. And we are overwhelmed just by data. So we disconnect. Engaging with a good piece of art can connect you to your senses, your body, and your mind, allowing us to feel and spurring us on to engagement and even action. 
We can help people not only get to know and understand something with their minds, but also to feel it emotionally and physically. By doing this, art mitigates the numbing effect created by the glut of information we're faced with today and motivate people into doing something. Story matters. It helps us process the world. It tempts us to empathize with the other. It makes us laugh and cry, and it cracks us open just a little bit to let the light in, or maybe a new idea. Story helps us make sense of the senseless. Our arts community is still really hurting. They were among the first to shut down and the last to go back to work. Across the lights went dark and actors and playwrights and directors and stage managers and designers and administrators and crew were all sent home indefinitely. Many of the arts organizations in Calgary experienced a full 18 months of shutdown. And to be honest, many of them did not reopen. This is not only financially painful for the artists, but creatively soul draining. The artists are grappling with what we do even matters anymore. Our 80-piece orchestras with 30 violins just too audacious. Our ballets with hundreds of hours of choreography and dozens of hand-stitched costumes gratuitous. Our giant canvases thick with paint too frivolous. Our stage is full of actors under hundreds of lights impractical. When people are unemployed, and poverty is on the rise and opioid deaths are at an all-time high, when bumped up to unprecedented personal and government debt, the Me Too movement and the reckoning of racial inequality, art can seem fairly inconsequential. But I wonder if maybe, just maybe, art matters more than ever. That we shouldn't be making art in spite of this, but because of this. Art just might be what the world needs right now. Actress Tilden Swinton, in her acceptance speech after being awarded the Rothko Chapel Visionary Award in 2014 said, I believe that all great art holds the power to dissolve things. Time, distance, difference, injustice, alienation, despair. I believe that all great art holds the power to mend things, join, comfort, inspire hope and fellowship, reconcile us to ourselves. Art is good for my soul, precisely because it reminds me that we have souls in the first place. Create art that reminds people they have a soul. Remind yourself that you have a soul and live accordingly. Thank you.